Hi there, this is Bob Warfield, and in this video, we're going to cover CNC router feeds and speeds. First thing, I'm assuming as a prerequisite, you've seen the setup and the two feeds and speeds videos in the G-Wizard Video University. I'm just going to talk about the differences involving CNC routers from those two videos. So be sure to check those out before you dive into this. Basically, what we're going to talk about are how you go about setting up machine profiles for your routers, uh, material considerations for routers. Routers often work on uh, different materials than your average uh, metal-oriented CNC milling machine, special cutters used by routers, uh, some special feeds and speeds challenges you may encounter. Uh, we'll show you how to get around those problems. Uh, what about cutting metal on a router, particularly aluminum or brass? soft metals. And then lastly, we're going to show you our vacuum table mini calculator, which will help you to prevent parts from popping off your vacuum table. So let's dive in here and see what we got. Now, first up is router machine profiles. Okay, let's head over here to our uh, setup tab and see what's involved with router machine profiles. For starters, we do have a fair number of already baked in default profiles for routers. We've got the Carbide 3D Nomads, uh, CNC Baron, uh, there's a generic uh, CD, CNC router choice, um, there's ShopBots, Lagunas, uh, StepCraft machines, Shape Ocos. So there's quite a few machines already defined. If your machine is not on there, and certainly if you've got a do-it-yourself router that you built, it's not going to be on there, you're going to need to create a machine profile. Just start off with uh, a generic, uh, the generic CNC router choice uh, is a good starting point. And just go ahead and fill in these basic details, right? So you're going to name it. Uh, you're going to come in here and you're going to say, well, it's a router. I don't want to change my profile here, but that's how you set it to be a router. Uh, you're going to give us a maximum and minimum spindle RPMs, your spindle power. Uh, that's in horsepower for uh, Imperial and it's in kilowatts for metric and the maximum feed rate your router can travel at. And that's really all there is to creating a router machine profile. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about uh, materials for routers. In particular, there's some, uh, there's some really useful features in our material database uh, for router users. Okay, so here we are in our feeds and speeds tab, and I've got a, a Shapeoko router dialed up here. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. So uh, in the material database, you first select family, and we have a bunch of different families that are, that are great for routers. We've got wood families, we've got wax, uh, we've got quite a bit of uh, different plastic as well. But the thing is, you, you're going to want to get in here and uh, click this alloy button. It may also sometimes talk about hardness and other things like that. But what that does is give you access to all of the subcategories. So for example, on the hardwoods, we've literally got hundreds of different species of wood here, right? I mean, I've got three different types of birch, uh, you know, elm, hickory, you name it, it's on here. And so you can kind of go from there uh, with the different type of wood that you want to do. I'll just dial up some uh, cherry wood there, okay? And it says, hey, cherry wild European and there's the species name, Prunus avium, and you're ready to go with, with uh, these materials. Likewise, on the plastics, um, right, we've got hard and soft. And by the way, the hard and the soft, they have more to do with what the plastic does when you cut into it. Uh, soft, you can actually slice off chips, whereas hard, it kind of just shatters uh, to a degree, and you get a finer powder out of those plastics. Now, here's an interesting thing. A lot of times you don't know uh, which category to even look in, okay? So, for example, maybe you've got some kind of uh, uh, a foam board or something, Ren Shape 2000, uh, something along these lines, or just, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you're not sure which of the plastic categories to look in. Well, that's when uh, you'll find that the... Uh, uh, search up here is most useful 
right? So for example, if I come in here and I go, well, I'm going to be cutting into nylon and I click my search, it'll take me right to the category that includes nylon and I can just save at that point. So that's a really handy thing to know about uh, in terms of finding plastics or, or whatever quickly. Okay, next thing I want to show you are the specialized cutters for routers. These are really no big thing, these cutters, but uh, they are handy to know about. I mean, some materials like, uh, take for instance, plywood. Plywood splinters really easily. The layers are thin, and you can sometimes get a really nasty splintered cut. And so uh, specialized cutters have been developed to help with this. And so if I click on end mill, go down here to tip shape, I've got these three router cutters. I've got a down cut, and what happens with the down cut is the spiral is actually pushing the chips down. So a couple of things to note about that. One, don't leave the cutter in one place. Don't plunge it, because otherwise those chips, you know, they don't have a place to go. Keep the cutter moving. Uh, but two, by pushing down, you're going to avoid that pulling up force that wants to splinter the top surface, right? And so you, you probably get a nicer cut. Now, maybe even better for your application is what's called a compression cutter. Compression cutters are, are pretty wild because they both pull up at the bottom of the cut and push down at the top. And again, it's, it's there to prevent splintering. Uh, another type of cutter you'll see on routers are straight flutes. Uh, they're handy for uh, certain things, but mostly because they're, they're much cheaper uh, to obtain. And so you can take advantage of uh, straight cut as well. I tend to prefer the Helix on my cutters. Now, having uh, selected one of these, it'll show up here in the little geometry window so you can see what's going on, right? So that's a, that's a single flute. You know, if I want to do a down cut, it's over here, right? Shows up right there. Okay, now I want to talk about some of the feeds and speeds challenges that can happen uh, for router users. There's, there's a couple of unusual cases that just have to do with how fast the spindle is going. Uh, but which is much faster than your average CNC milling machine, but also with how fast the machine can actually feed, but particularly a, a do-it-yourself machine. So let's have a look at these CNC router feeds and speeds challenges. I got a Shake Boko dialed up here. I've got plywood, high-speed steel end mill, and man, there's a lot of red showing. I've got RPMs in red, feed rate in red. I've got an error message over here on my tip panel. It shows red, feed limits red, minimum RPM is red. Don't panic. Do not panic. We're gonna fix all of it and it's not even really all that hard. The thing is, do always check your red. If you run feeds and speeds where there's any red showing at all in GWizard, well, gee, Wizard's got its doubts about that cut, and you really need to make, make sure you understand why things are red and whether it's okay to let them stay red. Okay? So anyway, this looks intimidating, but we're just going to take down these red issues one by one. And I see here that the minimum RPM uh, being too high for cut is an actual error message. So I want to deal with that first. And what we're saying here is... The little uh, trim router on the Shape Oco can only go a minimum of 16,000 RPM, and yet G-Wizard wants to go a little, low, a little under 8,000, which is way less than the minimum that the Shape Oco router can even do. So, wow, how do we fix that? Well, let's go over here and get our cheat sheet out, because that's, that's where I like to start. You'll eventually know how to do all of this off the top of your head, but meanwhile, you've always got the cheat sheet there. And uh, what we want to do is we want to get faster RPMs, right? Because we hit the lower limit. So here's the faster RPM list of things to try. And it says, you know, we can use a smaller diameter tool. We can use an HSM tool path. Uh, we can use carbide instead of high-speed steel. I like that one, actually. I prefer to use uh, carbide, especially on something like plywood. A lot of people don't realize it, but... Plywood and MDF, uh, those materials are made under pretty dirty conditions, and they often have grit embedded in the glue, which is really hard on your cutter. So let's go ahead and get a carbide cutter here uh, off of our tool menu. That's a much harder cutter and uh, should make it possible for us to do a little bit better. Okay, 
So we still have a minimum RPM issue. We're a lot closer, 11,000 versus 16,000. So now I'm going to try switching to a smaller tool. Let's go from a half inch diameter tool, which is pretty big, big diameter cutter on a shape Oko. Um, let's go down to a quarter inch cutter. Okay. Okay. Now, now things are looking a lot better. RPM has been taken care of. We're kind of comfortably up there into the shape Oko's range. And uh, now we've got to get rid of our feed rate limit because that's kind of what we have left. Well, what it says is the feed rate is maxed out. Check for rubbing warnings, but I don't see any rubbing warnings on here. Uh, so we're probably in good shape on that. Um, we could just choose to run with these feed rates. We know we're in good shape because we looked at what it was telling us about the maxed out feed rate. Okay, so we could just run with it like that. But let's say we actually want to reduce it further. Again, I've got my good old uh, uh, cheat sheet. Let's see what we can do to reduce the feed rate because we're hitting a limit. I want a slower feed rate. It says, well, I can either reduce my RPM and the feed rate will reduce accordingly, or I can use the tortoise hair slider. So, hey, let's use the tortoise hair slider. If I go what I like to call full tortoise, okay, bam, no red in sight. But the cut is going pretty slow, 14 inches a minute. By the way, this full tortoise is a very special setting. This is as slow as you can feed without having a problem with rubbing. So it's interesting to know it will get you the finest finish, but it's slow if you don't need that fine of a finish. So what I'm going to do, I like to use my right arrow key once I've uh, clicked on the tortoise. you got to have just clicked on it, okay? Now I'm going to just use that to kind of take the uh, the feeds and speeds up, right? So let's go up, right? You can see the feed rate is increasing. I'm at 49 inches, 54. Let's say I decide that's a very happy place to be. That's about half my maximum feed rate. Everything's green. I've got a good cut. I'm off and running. So you see how that works. You bring up your feeds and speeds. You look for any sign of red. And if you have the red, use your cheat sheet to figure out how to fix it, right? The red is going to tell you what's going on. You've hit one of these limits, right? You're requiring too much horsepower, too fast a feed rate, too fast RPM, or your minimum RPM range is too high and you've got, and you need to figure out how to slow down the RPMs required. Easy to do with the cheat sheet. You knock out the problems one by one, and pretty soon you've got this. You've handled the problem. Okay, the last thing I want to walk you through for CNC router users is the vacuum table mini calc. Uh, if you don't have a vacuum table, obviously you won't need it, but here's the thing vacuum tables are super convenient to have on routers. And uh, the problem with them is small parts, right? They don't have a lot of vacuum under them, and so they're not held down very tightly, and they fly off. And uh, this is a very frustrating thing to have happen on a job, especially if you walked away thinking things were going to just go automatically, and parts are flying off left and right, and you come back, and it's just it's mayhem. So there are different ways that people deal with this. They put tabs on the parts uh, to help hold it down. But another approach is if you use G-Wizard's vacuum table mini calc. Uh, it will limit the, the cutting forces so that your vacuum table can hold down the part and it won't pop off. So let's take... Okay, we're back in G-Wizard. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at full hair, right? Max speed, even though we've got an RPM limit, as we discussed, that's not a problem. And let's just start figuring out our cut. Let's say I'm cutting through some, uh, I don't know, some quarter-inch uh, plywood. So let's set the cut depth to a quarter inch. Actually, let's go a little bit more. We'll go down in the spoil board just to make sure we're really cutting things free. And it's a full slot cut, right? So if we look over here, deflection is good. Everything's good. we got a little feed limit. Uh, at, we're using about 0.35 horsepower, okay? And none of that's a big deal. So we come down here to the mini calc row, and there's a bunch of different mini calcs. Hit the vacuum button. What kind of pump type do I have? Well, let's assume I have a uh, just a Venturi, right? It's a small vacuum table. And uh, 
my hold down force for a two square inch, uh, four square inch part is 44 pounds. Uh, so I need to limit my spindle por torque to 44 ounce inches. And, you know, you can kind of see here in the gray, this cut's only taken 18, so it's probably not a problem. What about if my part is a lot smaller? Okay, let's say it's only a one inch uh, surface area on the part. And I want a safety factor of two. Well, now my spindle torque is way down. If I just ran this cut at 18 uh, and uh, uh, tried to do that with this vacuum situation, parts would be popping off left and right. But I can go limit spindle power, right? And boom, uh, pretty cool. I, I cut back my uh, uh, tool torque quite a bit. And uh, it's, it's now limited to what the vacuum table said. And I'm good to go, right? I, uh, I do have a, a little bit of a min RPM issue. Okay, but I'm so close. I'm just going to cheat. I'm just going to pump it up there and call it a day, right? Get rid of that error, and I'm off and running. Just that easy, just that simple. Now, wouldn't you rather just do that very quickly than try to figure out by trial and error how to keep your parts from popping off your vacuum table? Really, really cool feature that, uh, as far as I know, G-Wizard's the only product out there that has that. Thanks very much. I will be back at you soon with another video.